So a very tough week has come to an end for everyone in the Boston area. We've asked several of our knowledgeable guests to stay for a roundtable discussion of Monday's of the week's events and what it means for the nation moving forward. Joining us are CBS News senior correspondent and former FBI assistant director John Miller, Russia expert Beth Noble, travel editor Peter Greenberg, and former FBI profiler Mary Ellen O'Toole. She's the author of Dangerous Instincts, How Gut Feelings Betray Us. Uh, John, just to begin with, does this week prove that the emergency response system that we set up after 9-11 really works? I think what it proves is that the relationships that have been built and basically recast since 9-11 um, really function. I mean, the systems, the systems are in place, but the systems, I think, are dependent on people. And when you looked at the agencies that came together and performed seamlessly uh, over this very tense week in Boston uh, between the FBI, the Boston PD, the ATF, um, Homeland Security, and there was none of that squabbling um, and whatever issues came up were solved, you saw a model for how this is supposed to go, a unified command, multiple agencies. Even on a technical level, back to 9-11, they couldn't even talk to each other on the same radio frequencies. That's right, yeah. Now they can, and this, this really streamlined the situation. But Peter, when you look at what the new target is, I mean, this idea of soft targets, basically just targeting where people are, what's next on the list? I mean, does this open up new possibilities? Well, those possibilities don't just open up. They're there already. Yeah. Uh, this goes back to the concept, I think John will weigh in on this, that terrorists don't go for the path of most resistance. They go for the path of least. One of the soft hotel targets is hotel targets, excuse me. They're hotels, right? Lots of incoming people, lots of outcoming people, a lot of public assembly, lots of unattended bags in the lobby. Name me one hotel in this country where I couldn't tip the bellman $5 to watch my bag yeah. mm. and then walk outside and detonate it with a cell phone. Yeah. Hotel security needs to be revamped. It can't just be about keeping unwanted people out of the hotel, you know, like ladies of the night. It has to go beyond that. And there's no reason why you couldn't have a very soft, a very subtle metal detection systems so that you couldn't check into a hotel without a perimeter security system. We've seen that happen overseas now. Yeah. Marriott, uh, uh, Ritz-Carlton, American Mumbai. branded hotels. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and you know what? You need that perimeter system. Here in New York, the Marriott Marquis, you can't drive a cab into that hotel now without them making you open the trunk and at yeah. least look I've inside. Seen that. That's yeah. right. Mary Ellen, let's talk about the suspect for a second because uh, this is a 19-year-old kid. You yourself told us earlier you thought there was a the really good chance this kid would, would have killed himself um, or, or allowed himself to be killed. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he essentially stayed alive here? At the end of this, this whole tragic event, the younger suspect is now by himself. And so he's in a survival mode. And he's also in the, in the mode of he's now being hunted. But I think as important, he does not have the older brother, the influential one, the leader, the planner there to tell him what to do. So now he has to make his own decisions. He could have killed himself. He absolutely could have. I think a lot of it goes to the fact that he did not want to die. He was very afraid. He was a 19-year-old mm -hmm. kid now thinking like a 19-year-old kid. They make poor decisions. Their judgment is flawed. Their brains aren't even completely formed. And I think he was very, very confused. And at the end, fortunately, he survived. Mm -hmm. And the next step is now we think he'll talk to us under the right set of circumstances. So for I think for all of us in law enforcement, that's really a good thing to know mm -hmm. from his lips what really happened. Yeah. Beth, on an embarrassing note, <laughs> the ambassador from the Czech Republic to the U.S. had to put out a statement saying the Czech Republic has nothing to do with Chechnya. <laughs> We're two entirely different countries. Um, it was sort of a lesson in geography <laughs> for, I don't know, the media, for Americans at large. I think a lot of Americans are learning where Chechnya is. Exactly. It's a good thing that came out of this difficult week. <laughs> yeah. A lot of geography. Right. But, but it raises that question of what happened after 9-11, profiling. Uh, do you see sort of an impact for people from this region of the world? Uh, probably, you know, uh, a lot of Americans, you know, have not been thinking about Chechnya or the North Caucasus, uh, but they're going to be thinking about them and, and asking where people who come from Russia come from. You know, another thing to remember is that the Winter Olympics are going to be happening next year in Sochi, mm -hmm. right. right near this right. area. Okay. We've got to run. Beth, John, Peter, Mary Ellen, thanks all for being here with us this morning.